Hello and welcome back to Project Spark and welcome back to Let's Build a World. Today, I've actually made some changes off camera because it's all been in the brain of some of the citizens. They all have various lines now. The goblins are racist. One of the citizens believes that the mayor's office is made of gold, which the mayor very clearly denies. This goblin here doesn't know you, so won't sell to you. And this big fella here is Captain Verona of the Guard. If you need anything, come to him. And by the way, the goblins are a little bit racist. This is all stuff, I, like I said, I did it off camera because it's boring. It's all in the brain of the characters. It doesn't really work as a as sped up footage, so there was no point showing you it. I changed what these two do because I thought it would be more interesting to throw a little story in here and have this guy attacking the outhouse because in reality there is a goblin in there who has been stealing from the farm and that goblin happens to be really glad that he's on the toilet right now. Yes, I've thrown that kind of humor into this world. Sue me. I haven't changed the sign here on the right just yet. I will be getting to that. That will be done by the end of this episode. But the bulk of this episode is going to be spent down here by the docks. I can't remember who it was or what episode it was, but someone suggested we build a ship. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm not very good at this, but I added this guy here. He's a king who has had the gangplank for his ship fall into the water and he can't get to the ship. So you'll notice there's no ship. We're going to have to build it. Now, this was a process that took me a lot longer than I thought it would and turned out to be a lot more complicated than I thought it would be. Now with these videos, I usually speed things up by, I think, six times, five or six times normal speed is what I usually go for. I'll work it out based on how long the footage happens to be. This time around, we're actually running at eight times speed because this whole build process for the ship took me nearly an hour to do. There are little bits cut off at the beginning and end there, uh, but yeah, it took me nearly an hour to build this ship, and it goes through several design phases. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'll use the signs for the side of the ship, and it looks alright. But, I, I can't really figure out a good way to do the bottom of the ship. As you can see, I've already used a dormer for the front there to give it that nice angled, what do you call it, the, the front of the ship, the bow of the ship? I don't know, but whatever it is. To give it that nice angled look, and it, it sort of works. I had to use another one there to continue that down and make it look better. But it just, there's something about the signs on the side that just didn't quite work. I didn't quite get them lined up. So I do end up having to uh, take them out and use something else. I will say I'm really happy with the barrels on the bottom of the ship. They give it that nice rounded bottom that just looks lovely. And I'm still describing a ship, I swear. Not, not anything else with a rounded bottom. Honest. But, uh... Yeah, the barrels work perfectly. I do have to fill in some of the gaps later on with the barrels, but uh, other than that, they pretty much worked. Now, this is another design that I do end up scrapping what we're doing here with the uh, various pillars on the side, because it turns out the pillars aren't lined up, and that was the big struggle with this build, getting the things on the side to line up properly. What I end up doing actually works much better than any of these ideas right now, but the reason I'm leaving these in is to show you my thought process and show you the kind of development of this ship because I knew this was going to be a complicated build. I knew I was going to struggle to do it, but as I started putting it together and as it started taking shape, I realized that back, what is it, the rustic hole works really well and gives it a nice bit of shape. And I figured, okay, we'll keep the big central barrels and we'll work out a better way to do the sides of the ship here. And we do do that in a little bit. Now what I'm doing here is adding in the kind of railing at the side of the ship so people don't end up falling off. You'll notice I'm not editing the brain of these signs. You'll see why that's a problem a little bit later on. It is something that will be fixed though. It does need a slight edit. But other than that, this is actually starting to look pretty good. Now these, uh, these tables here, these come in really, really bloody useful because it turns out they sort of match everything and can be scaled up quite nicely and still look quite good and fit in quite nicely on the sides of the ship there, as you can see. So it's those tables that I end up using as the uh, sides of the ship, and I think they look really good. I'm aware that the front of the ship is made of thatch, but I'm not going to change that 
because it adds a little bit of detail and if you can just suspend your disbelief for a little bit and realize that that was sort of my only option with the front of the ship to make it look convincing, same with the back of the ship as well, then it does look pretty good. Now the ship of the ship, that's kind of difficult to say, the ship of the ship, is sort of done at this point. That's that's the core body of the ship, but what we do is end up going and adding all these things to the top of it. Of course, a nice area over where it'll be steered from. We, of course, have the mast right here as well. We're going to be putting a crane onto it on one side. There's some lights to go in there, and there's a big decorative piece at the front of the ship that I'm really happy with as well. There's the crane going in that I talked about, and uh, I, I really like that. I was tempted to put one on the other side of the ship, but I realized making it perfectly symmetrical is a little bit silly, it'll look a little bit too clean cut, so having it be slightly asymmetrical in places just worked really nicely. Of course, the uh, bits, th those beams going in there, they would hold up the sails of the ship. There aren't going to be any sails of the ship, but uh, I think it looks good. And this bit at the top here, I'm really happy with. Now, the king down there, his crown has some floating gems and stuff on it. They just float above his head. So I figured I'd sort of bring that onto the ship and have a floating gem with some lights that are pulsing quite, very, well, very purple. This one up here actually pulses a lot stronger. That had to be toned down a little bit because I didn't want it to pulse onto the beams all that much. But I am really happy with how that looks. It's just a nice little detail that I thought just... Would, would fit the theme of the ship and make it easier to associate with the king, I suppose. Because it doesn't really look like a big grand royal ship. It looks sort of thrown together and I'm kind of annoyed that that's the case, but I just don't see any other way to make a, a ship right now. The only uh, pack I have in Project Spark is the castle pack and I'm not really willing to go out and buy another one just yet. If I can find one that'll help me build a ship a lot easier, then sure, but I think the next pack I'll buy will probably be the sci-fi one, if I'm honest, because I just love sci-fi. Now, I've added in that uh, banner there, mainly because I just, I thought it worked. I thought it was a nice bit of detail. Just showed off that it was a, a royal ship. Was considering adding in the, what do you call it? Telescope, that's the word. <laughs> Was considering adding in the telescope there, but I didn't bother. And this is the big decorative piece in the front of the ship. A giant dead fish. I'm not quite sure why I added this, but I just figured that, you know, some ships have mermaids and stuff like that. We don't really have anything like that in Project Spark, so a giant dead fish was probably the next best thing. I mean, they both live in the sea, so, you know, why not? Then, of course, it came time to just make it look like it was attached to the ship a little bit more, so these... Uh, railings up here sort of allowed me to do that. I actually add in just a little bit more. There's also going to be a barrel here. I use another barrel and it actually looks really good. I was, wasn't was sure about it at first when placing it, but looking at it there, it does look pretty good. And then this pillar goes underneath to make it look supported. And that is all we're doing on the ship today. The reason we're not finishing the ship completely is because, well, I, I want to sit back and think about it and get some feedback. Now, as you can see, I changed that sign there to Williams Farm, and there's a little Easter egg in that corner right there. Yeah, that's about an event that happened earlier in the year, and, well, kind of really sucks. Just showing you these NPCs again, just to uh, remind you that that is a thing. These are all probably going to change. Some of them will change, some of them will do different things. I'm not entirely sure what other NPCs to add in. I'm still trying to work out how to get them to work. I really want to get some nice pathfinding in there so they'll walk about places and do different things, but I'm, I'm still learning. I need to look up some tutorials and get that sorted. I'm also still working this floor in here. It doesn't quite work perfectly, but here we are on the, uh, on the dock again. As you can see, the ship is looking pretty good. That's the problem. Those signs need their brains ripped out. Otherwise, they're going to keep telling me to create a message. I also added in some stairs, which need fixed a little bit as well. Some more pillars at the front there, and some signs to stop you from falling over. The ship does need finished, but that will be in the next episode after I've heard what you think of the ship. So yes, leave any and all feedback, and of course, suggestions in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, then like the video. I've been the Conflict Nerd, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.